Okay, let's go ahead and open up an instance of vCarve Pro 8. Now it's important to uh, note that the tools that I'm going to be using in vCarve Pro 8 uh, are also available in vCarve Desktop and Aspire. So you can use this demo across the board. So we're going to create a brand new file. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay out a, um, a decorative um, wall um, decoration for the holidays using uh, the home for the holidays number five mold board as the uh, the basis for this so we're going to set up a, a job space that's going to be 15 inches across by six inches in height and we're going to use a piece of material that's going to be three quarters of an inch thick our datum will be set to the center um, we're going to use inches and we're going to use a very high modeling resolution and we're going to click ok so we're going to go over to our clip art tab and go to our design and make folder. Now I'm assuming that you've you've purchased and downloaded the um, Home for the Holidays number no. five CNC project and ran the installer. So it should show up in your um, library browser. And we're going to go ahead and double click on the mold board now. Because the, 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 the job space that I created is larger than the actual model, then it's going to be um, the model we plunked in the center and it's going to be undersized for my project. But that's okay because part of this demo that I'm going to show you is going to be um, dem demonstrating how to um, optimize some tooling for this particular project. And these are some um, tips and tricks that uh, for tooling that you're going to be able to use to help uh, almost... Um, with every job that you do, or at least you'll be able to analyze the job and see if these um, uh, shortcuts or these um, uh, these tips will actually be handy for you, depending on the job. Of course, every job is going to be different, but in this case, there's a huge, large, um, flat space in the middle of this this sign that we don't need to use a really tiny um, cutter. To clear away the material from, we can use um, a larger bit and save us tons of time. So I'm going to illustrate that in a bit, but we are going to need um, a special vector that those of you with vCarve Pro or vCarve Desktop would have to manually draw. Those with Aspire could actually use the software to uh, get you this outline, but I'm going to actually going to provide you with the outline. So this is the important tip for this part of the video is that um, you need to import in this outline at the same time that you or just after you import in the mold board in order to make sure that the size um, is accurate. So we're going to go up to file, we're going to import, and we're going to import in a vector and you're going to be able to download this um, this file right here um, off of the project page for the home for the holidays number five and it's called the mold board surface outline. So if we click that and go open then vCarve Pro will stick that right in the center of your um, job space. So just to make sure, and I know it is, we're going to press F9 and we're also going to select the um, the mold board and press F9 just to make sure everything is good. Now what's going to happen is when we select both of those at the same time and we scale them up, they will be accurate. The, the, the outline will line up perfectly with the center of our mold board. So let's go to our drawing tab and let's just go ahead and size this up. So we're going to make sure that our our uh, decoration is going to be 14 inches across and because we have the link X and Y together then everything should be happy apply and then we hit close and that that looks great so that's exactly what I wanted and you'll see that outline is lined up still um, just to note it does look a little funny here but when you select the actual um, grayscale for the model it tightens right up and you can see that that vector lines up just perfectly and actually that was the actual vector that I used to help model um, this um, project so it's perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to import in one more vector um, and this is also going to be available on the project page for um, the Home for the Holidays number five and it is some stylized text um, be merry and bright so what I did was actually used the font called Pristina I guess that's what it is, and laid this out, did some sizing, and did a little cleanup on it. So we're going to use this as being our v-carving um, uh, pro, our v-carving path to make sure our text um, gets v-carved on there, nice and neat and tidy. And we're going to select all of that text. We're going to right-click on that, and we're going to group that all together into one 
one thing. Makes it a little easier to select down the road. Okay, so let's just go ahead and split the, or tile the window here so we can see both our 2D and our 3D view. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that our um, mold board um, shape height is the right thickness. So we're going to click that and we're going to click the little blue, um, the, the dark blue button at the bottom here and that will bring up our floating uh, properties dialog and we're going to go ahead and make the shape height of this 0.35. Press the space bar and we're going to close that. That just makes sure that we get a good shape height out of that and everything is going to be fine. So our next step is we're going to go and um, we need it in the end no matter how we tool this whether it is with the very basic tooling which is straight up use a roughing pass one finishing pass do your v-carving and do your profile cut we're still going to need a profile vector around this whole um, uh, layout so we're going to go ahead and we're going to select the mold board we're going to go to our modeling tab and we're going to get v-carve pro to get us an outline for that and it did so if we go ahead and click you'll see that there's actually a purple outline all around that. So that was pretty easy to do. And let's go ahead and press F12 and bring up our tooling. So the first bit of tooling uh, I'm going to show you is going to be the straight up basic, um, like I said before, the roughing, finishing, v-carving, and profile. And then we're going to take a look at the time for that. And then we're going to go ahead and optimize that tooling um, using a pocket tool path um, to cut the um, the tooling time down dramatically um, for those of you that want to um, save a bit of time. So we're going to go ahead and set up our material. So it's a three quarter inch uh, piece of material. Our datum is going to be set to the center. You're going to want to set this to wherever you'd like it to be. And one thing I would like you to note about this model is that the berries, the holly berries, are actually above the surface. Um, that's on purpose um, for uh, so that when you, if you choose to use this as a, an actual mold board to make like a cookie mold or to make a clay mold for making um, salt dough Christmas ornaments or maybe you just have some kids in the house or grandkids and you want to make a nice um, uh, Play-Doh mold for them, then I wanted it so that when you flipped it over that the berries would actually uh, make sort of like legs so you'd have a thick backing on your, um, or a thicker backing on your actual um, clay uh, replicas so um, that's actually on purpose but um, I, I did want to note that and so also what we're going to do is we're going to leave a little bit of, of extra material on, on the top of our board and on the back of our board. We want the main gap to be on the bottom. Now um, we're, we're, we're going to yeah so we're just going to go with that for now. Uh, we're going to make sure that your um, Make sure that these two um, settings here are set up for your machine. Uh, I'm just I've set them up to be a quarter inch clearance. The plunge is a quarter inch, and this was just whatever VCarve Pro decided. Um, but you're going to want to set that up based on your machine. We're going to click OK. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with our first bunch of tool paths. So we're going to go ahead and do a finishing or a roughing pass first. So we're going to select this outside uh, vector, and we're going to click our roughing pass. We're going to use a uh, quarter inch end mill and we're going to use a selected vector. We're going to use a boundary offset, so we're going to overshoot that vector by a quarter inch. We're going to leave behind 0 0.04 of an inch of material to, to take off during our finishing pass. And we're going to use Z-level roughing and the rest of the stuff we're not going to worry about and we're going to calculate that. There we go. And we're going to preview each toolpath as we go to make sure that we get what we expect to happen. If we don't get what we expect, then there's a problem. We should go back and fix that. So let's preview that toolpath. And that's what I expected to have happen. So that's great. Let's close that. And now let's quickly do a finishing pass. So we're going to do a finishing pass. We're going to use a 1 8 inch ball nose end mill and we're going to run that across our whole project. Um, and we're going to use a selected vector. We're going to overshoot by 0.125 an inch. We're going to use an offset strategy and we're going to go ahead and calculate that. It's going to take a little while to calculate because we're, of course, we're, we're machining the whole face of this project with the small cutter, which in some cases, for some users, that's not a big deal. For those that are maybe trying to get a business started out of this, then you might want to um, try and um, optimize your tooling a bit more to save you some time. It brings down the, the final cost of your parts. And there we go. So let's preview that tool path. It's going to clean it up really nice. Everything is going to look great. Perfect. 
close that. Let's go ahead and do our V carving. So we're going to select the Be Merry and Bright text. We're going to do a V carve toolpath. Um, our start depth is going to be zero. What we're going to end up doing is projecting this onto our um, 3D surface, which is just flat, but we do want to project it so that it projects right onto that surface. We're going to use a 60 degree um, V bit. It looks great. And we're going to go ahead and project the toolpath onto the 3D model, and we're going to select Calculate. Let's preview that visible toolpath. And that's what I expect to have happen. Let's close that. Then we're going to do our last toolpath, which is going to be a profile cut, which will allow us to actually um, tab our project into our board, and then we can easily cut it out using our bandsaw. So we're going to go ahead and use our profile cut. Now we know that the um, when I first laid this project out, I decided that the um, the shape height of this was going to be 0.35 an inch. So our first cutout pass is going to be 0.35, and we're going to go, we're going to go down to the right through the board. So we need to make sure that these two numbers add up to three quarters of an inch. So the easiest way to do that is to put in 0.75 minus 0.35, and then press the equal sign on your keyboard, and VCarve Pro will figure out that number for you. Of course, some quick metal math. It's pretty easy numbers, but if there are more complicated numbers than, than knowing that you can put an actual um, formula or sum in there, then that, that um, makes life a bit easier for you. We're going to use our end mill, which is great. We're going to use, we're going to go on the outside of that vector to cut that out. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to use some tabs. We're going to add in some tabs, edit our tabs. We're going to use four tabs. So we're going to add those in and we're just going to slide those along just to some of these more flat spaces on our project so that we are on our layout so that um, they're easy to remove without getting caught up into our holly berries. Oh, I deleted that one by mistake. Double click and put that one back in again. Close that and we're going to go ahead and calculate that and then we're going to preview the visible toolpath. Now there we go. So there we have our final uh, decoration for our wall. We can cut those tabs off um, with our um, bandsaw and we'd have a, a nice project to finish. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our tooling time on that. So that's a, an hour and 37 minutes it's going to take to um, to tool that um, or to machine that based on my numbers which are not going to be the same as your numbers. So this is just more or less for comparing the two different tooling times. Um, you're going to have to rely on your own settings to give you proper numbers. So we're going to close that. Now let's go ahead and optimize this. So the easiest way to optimize this would be to, this is a flat area, so let's go ahead and just use a pocketing tool path to pocket all of that out of there right from the get-go and then we don't need to worry about running that little teeny weeny tool all the way along there and wasting all that time. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a two new toolpaths. One is going to be a finishing toolpath for the detailed bits and the other one is going to be a pocketing toolpath. So let's go ahead and do a quick finishing toolpath here. I've only the space between that mold board vector that we provided for you that we imported in at the first of this video and the outside or the outline profile that we've created also earlier in this demo. So let's just go ahead and do a quick finishing pass. So we're going to use those two vectors. We're going to use our quarter inch uh, ball nose end mill. No, sorry, our one eighth ball nose end mill. And we're going to use selected vectors. We're going to offset uh, that by 0.125, and we're going to calculate that. And you'll see that VCAR Pro can calculate that toolpath much faster than it did before. And we have a nice um, uh, toolpath. So we're going to go ahead and reset our toolpath preview and we're going to go back and we're going to pretend that we just did our roughing so we're going to preview our roughing pass which is what we had calculated before and then we're going to go down to the bottom of our of our toolpath list and we're going to preview this new toolpath we just selected or just created sorry so let's preview that and you'll see that it goes in and it cleans that up and you'll also notice that there's a raised edge here that we need to work on. We need to go ahead and pocket out this center. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead and close that and we're going to create a new pocket toolpath. 
So in order to create a pocket tool path, you have to have a vector selected. So we're going to select this vector that we imported in earlier. And we need to figure out what the first cut depth is going to be of our um, of our project. So to do that, if we go into our 3D view, and because we have the material setup done already, and that's important to note, then VCarve Pro will give us the height of this surface, the Z, the Z height, um, based on where it is inside of our material. So that's important. So you'll see down here in the bottom, it won't show until I roll my mouse over it, it says point sorry, minus 0 0.139. So I'm, I copied that number up into here. So but we're going to make it a positive number because a negative number is not going to work. So we're going to convert that to a positive number. So it's 0 0.1309. Again, let's just make sure that matches. It does down here in the corner. It says 0 0.1309 and that's what's there. So that's perfect. So we're going to go ahead and use those two numbers there. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill and we're going to go ahead and calculate that. So now if we preview that toolpath you'll see that it's going to clean off that extra material and we're ready to roll. Now we can go ahead and preview the v-carving that we created earlier and we can go ahead and preview that profile cut that we created earlier and we're getting the same result and actually we're going to get a better result because the surface finish on this area that we pocketed is going to be nice and smooth opposed to having some fine ridges from that small cutter that we used. Now if we go ahead and select all the tool paths that we want to go ahead and have VCarve Pro calculate and to give us a total time for tooling, we need the first roughing. We don't want that finishing pass. That's the first one we used. We're going to go ahead and show that that V carving tool path, that profile cut. We're going to use the second finishing pass and then the pocket tool path. And we're going to go ahead and see what that nets us for a time. And it gives us 44 minutes. So before it was an hour and 37 minutes. So that's like 97 minutes to machine um, it using the small cutter. But if we use the pocketing tool path, it only takes 44 minutes. Again, based on my settings to net us a, a really great result. So there's some great tips and tricks for you um, to show you how to uh, optimize some tooling for the Home for the Holidays number five project. I hope that helps. Important note, if you plan to create tooling and run it on your CNC, make sure that you use values for the material setup and for the parameters of each toolpath that are safe and appropriate for your CNC machine, the tooling you have available, and whatever material you are planning to use for your project.